Hello YouTube, how are you all doing? Okay, I want to go and say something. I'm feeling a bit better, but I just want to address us Africans. And I'm going to address this more as I feel more better, hopefully. But I just can't wait and I'm just going to start talking about it now. Even though I'm not fully recovered yet. So thank you for all of you that is showing me love and worry about my health. I'm getting better. I'll get there. I am still sort of breath when I'm talking, but I'll get there. So I'm going to say this in Walla for some of you guys that are watching because I posted that video yesterday and today I'm more better so they will know what I'm saying. Oh, I have to stop touching this table because it's going to save the camera. So yet again, if you knew what is this one will give you a Then I def come video my def tiny. Then I could see how funny so hopefully so I will get a so what. So my internet tore up. Why tell them when you put the video in your water and you can you leave? Because little man not get tore up. No more come with. They also them just book a def video like give my def do the makeup in your water and all that. Just you know, so what else my arm will do? Why the man in the water like that? Then I leave my water in my you can you leave. Nin mel nga xamne fek dara dalul ñu bañ robé ñu rek duñ gëm né li mo ñu dal wala duñ gëm né mo dal nit lu nit wax ñu nako li xamut xawma da dañ koy def because dañ dé ragal wala dañ koy def bur dañ bëgg def nit ki mu feel beta way really dañ ko wara baye té dina wax li tax suma défé vidéo holof bi so lu rek la bëgg na wax ndé damay wax ci hangalé and i'm sorry so yeen ñu déggul hangalé so yeah, I'm sorry about what I was saying. I was just trying to explain to the world of people about what I'm going to be talking about. So I went on Facebook a couple of days ago. I think it's two days ago. And I did a Facebook live. And I was telling people that I'm not well. And the reaction I got is, is overwhelming. Okay. Thank you so much for a lot of you that so love. Okay. But it's also overwhelming for some other people. But some of these other people is before I even do the video because they are like close to me. Some of them are. And I wanted to talk about this because it's something that is in African community, you know. So anyway, welcome to the channel. And I'm going to be doing this video today, although I'm not fully recovered yet, but I'm getting there slowly. I am out of breath when I'm talking, especially when I'm talking fast. So I'm going to try to talk slowly and just to do some little cute makeup to cheer myself up while we're talking and just to cheer us up because a lot of us are going to be in the house now. So how are you all doing with this nightmare thing going on? I'm just drinking hot water, nothing else. So um. I've been drinking ginger. I had two gingers so far, but they weren't fresh ginger. They are this ginger tea that you have to buy. Uh, it's it's really nice, by the way. But I think it's China. It's China made. What am I talking about? It's not. I think it is China made, but it's. I don't know how healthy it is, but it's it's nice. But um, it comes in sachets, so you just put it in the hot water, and it's like it looks like coffee, but then it's ginger and honey. And I add a little bit of honey and lemon to it. It's really nice. But um, my daughter wanted to get me some fresh ginger today in the subs. I was like, yes, because the UK subs have no ginger this whole time. Well, the Sainsbury's near me here, but now they do have some for some reason. So I did a Facebook live video a few days ago saying that I think I had the coronavirus. 95% thing I had it because all the symptoms that I'm having that is the coronavirus symptom I don't have the cough well I hope I'm not gonna have it because I had this for a week now and it's so far no cough involved but I hope it's not gonna involve because I have enough okay so I did a video saying that I think I had the coronavirus and when I, why I did that video on Facebook is that I do see a lot of things on Facebook in the past and I'm still going to continue talking about things that, you know, that I think our culture should pay attention to. But of course, I'll talk about things a bit different now, you know. 
I am more disciplined now. Hopefully, I will be more disciplined as well because I'm not alone now anymore. I have somebody in my life, you know. You have to watch what you do when you have somebody. You're not just jumping about it alone anymore, yeah. <laughs> and my man, he's not like me. He's very, like, he's not a social media person at all. Like, he's very, like, just want everything private and stuff. So... I am finding Barry <laughs> trying to talk to him about things, but he's not like trying to stop me to do the videos. Well, I hope he's not going to try to do that in the future. He's not trying to do that now, and he promised he wouldn't be like he's okay with it. But he just asked if I could like watch certain things that the way I say certain things. And even before him, I know I should watch the way I say certain things, you know. Ah, <sighs> this nightmare flu. So. I know I should watch how I say certain things, you know, even before him. I was planning on changing, okay? This is just the reality. Some of you that watch me for so long, you know me. From day one, like I keep saying, I know I should watch how I talk. Because sometimes I just say things like so raw that it's insane. And it's immature and unprofessional. And not for people, somebody with, with children to behave like that. Or just somebody in general with their full senses, okay? And I know this from day one, okay? But it's a reason behind a lot of my videos and just the way I behave in some of my videos, which I already told you guys already, okay? So you that don't know, I can't explain everything. But I'm trying to change. Hopefully the change will just, you know, happen soon. It's, it's, it's working. So, and then he came into my life. So he's making things easier for me, you know, for this change to happen, which I'm thankful for, okay? Because I am quite a positive person. I like to just be positive even if I have to choke myself sometimes. Because with life, sometimes if we don't choke ourselves, we just can't be positive. But anyway, that's another story. So when I did this video, it was about me talking about the coronavirus. Uh, you know, the thinking that I had it 100% or at least 90%. And the Gambia government, which is my country where I'm from, should spend the money. I don't know why I'm looking at the window. Should spend the money they, they have that they give them for um help with the coronavirus they should spend it to help people because this coronavirus is real because everyone is complaining on facebook that the government is not spending the money they give them they give them i don't know 50 million the last year, and they're not spending it they said to, to to help people with the coronavirus they've not seen what they're doing and uh i just day or two before i did that video someone went to the hospital saying they're not well and they couldn't have oxygen so the person had to die because no oxygen so i was very scared you know because with everyone knows that with this coronavirus you cannot breathe and i experienced it because i i experienced mine on tuesday my breathing well my escape death i call it escape death my escape death was on tuesday okay so after I escaped that on Tuesday with the breathing stop thingy, the breathing won't try fighting to stop. And I'm like, you're not stopping yet. I have children. You're not stopping yet. I have to send my mom 100 pounds. I have to help my sister. I have family in Africa who need me. You're not going to stop. Come back. You know, it was a nightmare. I'm still not well. It's just a joke. That's why I'm talking, but I'm still not well at all. You know, so um, so after I experienced that, I was like, "What the hell, man?" You know, people in Africa, I didn't think of that straight away. But uh, after three days, three or four days after something like that, I think it's three days after, I then know that I can feel I feel a bit better now for talking, and I didn't know that I have to talk for people in Africa because if people saying that somebody died in the hospital, they're making a Facebook live in the hospital with the person saying they're dying uh, because of no oxygen and no, I don't know what, what, and the person had to die, then people gonna die of this thing that happened to me and I couldn't breathe. So I did that video, you know, but I have a lot of people that think this, that commenting, a good comment, okay? They did not try to say that I don't have the coronavirus. Okay, because I explained all the symptoms I have and it's everything that they say when you have the coronavirus, this is what you're going to have, apart from the coughing. But bear in mind, they say that it's not everyone that's going to have the coughing either. Everyone have these symptoms differently. They do say that to make it clear. 
okay? But I think as Africans, it's like we are scared of some, when we are scared of something, or we don't know how to handle something, we just deny it instead. It's quicker, yeah. We just like, no, this is not what's happening. So find the barrier. So I got people, you know, telling me that you didn't have the coronavirus, you know. You, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have that type of comments much. I have very few comments. Anyway, I deleted the video after, I deleted the next day. I think, because it was having too much attention. So, and I didn't want to scare people. When I did that video, I do, I do explain for the government to help people to give them, uh, to get oxygen and get all the things they need for coronavirus. Because this coronavirus is real and I can't breathe and I'm dying. It was really worse than this even that time. Even though, I, you know, I can't breathe now properly after, after I start yap yapping now. So when I did that video, a lot of people do think that, you know, that I was not, I was, that I don't have the coronavirus, you know. I said, I think 99% I have the coronavirus because... And, and why people are so, you know, why, what is people's problem with this coronavirus is that, oh, I can't breathe again. Is that, did they think that if someone just have it, they're going to die? Did they forget that people say that a lot of people have this coronavirus and they're not going to die? Did they, not, did they not say that like, it's like four or, four or three or four or two, something like that, out of a hundred that have it, that is going to die. So why, why are they denying it? Malaria is more dangerous and I survived malaria, you know, all my life in Africa when I was there until I was 25 when I came here 2006 So but it's when you have when you tell them when you tell someone in Africa you have malaria They're not gonna deny you but when you tell them that you have you you think you have the coronavirus They're just denying like what is it? Okay, I, I just want to talk about this today. It's not like I feel well like I said you can see, if you know my face, you know I'm not well at all. You know, my body is still painful. But anyway, we get that. We get to the symptoms when I have time to explain all that, if this video will be that long. But I just want to explain why I click the video. And if you guys want to know how the symptoms are, let me know. I'll do a special video for the symptoms. What's the English word? But if I have to say all of that now, I'm not going to finish what I'm talking about because I'm already out of breath i'm gonna try to quickly end this video <laughs> before i can <laughs> before my daughter will cry again for calling 99 for trying to call 99 so um what was i'm gonna say so so as african like i said it's like when something go wrong we don't know how to handle it and then we just deny it instead you know and this thing really pains me you know coronavirus or no that's just how we behave and we cannot run away from life, you know, life comes with good and bad. Okay, what I want to say is that if any of you that, if anyone say that I had, the, I think I had the coronavirus, instead of you just jumping and deny it, okay, it's, it's really painful, you know. For me, it was really painful because I know how I was feeling. This sickness is actually very painful. Now I know why it kills a lot of people, especially old people. How can an old person or a person with no healthy body can handle this type of pain that I have been through all these years? Not all these years. What am I talking about? <laughs> Subhanallah. I mean, for the last few days, it started... Um, the, 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 the escape dying was on Tuesday. But before the escape dying... The whole thing started like three days before the escape dying. But like I said, if you guys want me to do a special video about the symptoms that I'm feeling and stuff, I will do it. But at the moment, I just want to focus on this thing. It's really important to me, okay? Because this thing is annoying and just we, ha we have to stay away from this thing. This is why I, I, I open my page. I open my page because of these things. The way we deny things and run away from things. And just run and hide under the carpet. I know when someone you love tell you that they have coronavirus or they think they have it, you want to calm them down. Okay? So your mind just jump on denying it instead. Because that's the African mentality. We just deny things. And that's how we calm things down. We just deny it. No, you cannot deny it. The person that is telling you they think they have this, they're not deaf. You know, they know what they're talking about. So if you just deny it and try to just brush it under the carpet, like they don't know what they're talking about or like they're just scared. They're just talking because they're scared that 
or because they just da da da, but that's not da da da. You're not helping them. You know, you're making them feel stupid and they know what they're feeling. You're only going to make it worse for them, okay? Because you make them more afraid. If you are doing that because you think you're helping them, you're going to make them more afraid. You're going to make them more thinking that they're dying. They're going to think they're dying because they're going to think they're dying because they think that now they have the sickness, but nobody believed them, okay? That's so definitely they will not have help or something because nobody believed them. Also, they will think that, the, you know, it's not going to take their mind off it, you know, especially when they read all the symptoms that when they, you know, they tell them if you have all these symptoms, that means you have it and they have the symptom and it's very painful and they nearly die from the breathing and you're telling them that's not the symptom, that's not the thing. So instead of doing that, we can just try to face the reality and talk to the person, you know, like, okay, I understand you have all the symptoms. But even if this is the sickness, hmm, you, it will not do you nothing. You will win. This sickness will not win. You will win. Inshallah, you will win. Okay? This will calm them down. Also remind them that, remember, this sickness doesn't kill everyone that have it. They said it only kill 1 or 2 percent or 3 percent of the, the, the 100, which is like 1 or 2 or 3 people of the 100 that have it you're going to be among those people that didn't, you know, will escape this. Whatever this is, will not win you. Okay? But if all of you just keep saying, no, this is not the thing. No, this is not the thing. No, you didn't have this thing. No, come on. You're going to annoy the person. The person is feeling symptoms that they never, ever feel in their entire generation. We all know the full and cold and flu symptom. I live in this country 14 years. I know cold and flu symptom. I live in Scotland for 14 years. When someone feeling something that is exactly like what they're describing, that is the sickness, especially the breathing problem, and you're telling them it's not the sickness, you're stressing them. You know, just pray for them and make them understand that even if it's the sickness, they're not going to die. I didn't know 100% is the sickness because I didn't have tests. That's the only reason. Okay? But I have 95% believe that it's the sickness because I know how I nearly die with the breathing. And I never have that problem in my life. After that, the chest pain, even before that, that, that time, I wake up with this breathing problem on Tuesday. With this heart, uh, kick, lungs problem. I wake up with it on Tuesday. Like I said, I cannot explain all the symptoms. Because if, if I have to do that, the video will be so long. If you guys want me to tell you the symptoms, let me know. I'll do a video this day soon, inshallah, okay? But if the person know all the symptoms that they're feeling and they have a feeling that they have this, this, the, you know, the, this nightmare thingy, flu thingy, flu or, or whatever you call it, huh? do not tell them that you, I, I, you don't have it, you know, you don't have it, that, why are you calling it this? That's not what is it, you're calling it this, God forbid, you're calling it this, God forbid. God forbid what? The people that are having it and dying are better than them? Huh? I'm not better than them. People are having it and dying every day. And people are having it and not dying every day. So I'm not better than those people that are having it. So why are you telling me God forbid? You know, us Africans, because we don't like to face reality, we like to deny. That's why we don't get anywhere. When something happens, we will not face it and fix it. We just deny and run away and just try to, 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 to push the thing away. It doesn't work like that. You face it and fix it and tell it. You don't have to be afraid. So anyway, like I said, why I, I was talking about it was that for people to know that even if you have the symptoms, even if you're not going to get tested, because if you live in the UK, especially in Scotland here, it's so hard to get tested. I think they said there's a test that is coming up now. I tried so hard to get tested. I couldn't get tested. I couldn't even get through to any number. Not to mention tested. But like I said, if you guys want me to do a special video about that, let me know. But I tried three days. For trying to get help and i couldn't get any help the number was never never answered so i have to just give up and manage myself what can i do so because i don't get tested you know these people that think that i don't have it they think i don't have it and then they say something in my language is that dangai charlie wreck this dangai charlie wreck is very painful dangai charlie wreck that's mean you just you just scared you just i don't know how to say it in english 
Charlie is like, you know, when someone, when someone get hot and then they scream, they say, ah, that's mean they're doing Charlie. When someone get hot and they take the pain, they don't say nothing. That's mean they're not doing Charlie. That's the only way I can <laughs> describe it. So they keep saying, Danga Charlie, right? I'm like, oh my God. And this is so painful, but this is not like my mom and my sister. No, they're not saying that because they know me. They know that before I say something, I like to watch, especially with myself and especially just with people's health and whatever. They know that I they know that I cannot just scare them and tell them I think I have this when I'm lying. Or da da da. And they know I tell them that everything that they said when you have this thing, that's what you will feel. I said that's what I'm feeling apart from the coughing. But they said the coughing is not for everybody that some people will not have the coughing. <sighs> My chest, I cannot sit down like this because I sit down like this most of the time and when I do that, I can feel it. It's so uncomfortable. My lungs are still fighting, you know, but it's really better now, but... So my sisters and my mom, they know, like I said, I will not tell them that, you know, that I think I have this when I don't think I, when I don't have clear evidence. So they've never denied it. But it does hurt me, you know, when I have these other people denying me and one of them was close to me and I was like, oh my God, I was crying all night. I was like, why this person don't believe me or something. And then maybe this person, this person after explained to me that that they didn't want to tell me because they don't want to hurt my feelings you know and they don't want to believe they don't want me to believe that i have it or they don't want to believe that i have it themselves because they love me so much they don't want to believe that i have this you know i'm like it's not like this is something that doesn't happen to people that you love you know this is why our community doesn't really move though because we think that we think that bad thing is not for people that we love and even when our children tell us that they've been raped, you tell them, Shh, don't talk about it, quiet. No, that didn't happen. Or you're like, that happened to a lot of people. It's not just you, but no one talk about it. Shh. You know? And the child will be, Shh, but they will never be Shh, inside here. They will always be dying inside here. You cannot Shh, inside. You can only Shh, the outside. What's the point Shh, in the outside? When you kind of shh, the inside, the person is dying inside. <sighs> so I just wanted to say that, you know, that the coronavirus does teach me a lot. I don't want to mention the name because they said YouTube is blocking certain videos for mentioning the name because maybe they don't want people coming out with information that they're not supposed to be coming out with or something. So I guess they're right. But this thing teach me a lot of things, you know. I'll do videos about what it teach me, you know, after I'm really proper recovered. But yeah, I just want to say that when someone says that they're going through something or they think they're going through the thing, instead of just pushing it in the bush, what's the word, in the, brushing it in, under the carpet, like the English people would say, don't try to brush it under the carpet. You know when it's like i don't know how to describe it you cannot brush a fish under the carpet because it's gonna smell it's gonna go rotten and smell instead take the fish out you know and take it to the bin you know or go and clean it and cook it i love fish but us african we try to to, to just brush all the fishes under the carpet <laughs> I know people call me that Western mind because I'm very open-minded. <laughs> My family members, they say to me I'm Western-minded. But I don't think I'm Western-minded. I think, well, I don't know how to call my personality, but I think some Africans are very open-minded. It's not like we're all close-minded or we're all like da-da-da. Certain things, we definitely wouldn't brush it on the carpet or whatever. But certain things are important. The majority of us will just try to brush it under the carpet even if it's fresh or whatever you cannot be brushing stuff under the carpet you know what i mean you just can't like i said i'm not very well i'm not very strong yet i'm not fully recovered yet 
but I just wanted to talk to you guys about this because this is killing me. I'm like, why they denying me? Why are they saying that I don't have this? And I'm so angry. I'm not afraid of having this, okay? I know that I used to have malaria a lot of time growing up in Africa and it never killed me. And my family members used to have it also. And if we can escape that, we can escape anything. Also, this virus is deadly, but they already tell you that it's not killing everyone that having, having it. They already tell you the amount of people that it kills among the amount of people that have it. That's not a big number at all. It's not like they're telling you that it's killing 90% of the people that have it. We should be very lucky about this virus, by the way. I know it's very hard to say that now because people are still scared. But I want to tell you that I think 95% that I have this virus. Like I said, if you guys want me to do a video about the symptoms, let me know. Because as you can see, I'm sort of bred now again. I continue yap yapping. So I cannot explain all the symptoms and everything. But even though I was feeling the pain on my own with my sister and my children and my mom that believe me, you know, and a couple of people that believe me, especially from that live video I did, I still was not afraid that I'm going to die. If I tell the truth on Tuesday, I was afraid that I was going to die. But I, I know I wasn't going to die. What am I talking about? It's like, I think I was going to die, but I know I'm not going to die. Because I, I don't know why I think I was not going to die. I'm crazy. <laughs> I guess no one wants to think they're dying. But <laughs> ah, especially looking at my daughter. My son was in his room. He didn't know about this. That Tuesday, you know, incident. That, that half dead incident. But my daughter was here with me. So I, I was just maybe thinking that because of my daughter, God will not kill me like in front of her or I don't know. I was just thinking maybe God will not kill me because I trust my heart inside. I know the type of person I am deep down. So I know I, I, God is not going to kill me just like that. What am I talking about? I shouldn't say that. It's like people that are dying are, are bad. No, that's the wrong word. I take that back. I mean, when I say I know God is not going to kill me like this, I, now, I, I didn't mean like I'm good. I mean like I know my heart who I am here and I it's like I know that what I've been through after all now that I'm in this new journey of trying to forget what I've been through and just start a new chapter of my life and continue raising my children with this new chapter and God will be like Amy no coronavirus is here cook dear go and forget about new chapter I I, <laughs> I just think God was not ready to do that I don't know why also I was calling God's names and just pray. <sighs> a lot of you would think that it's because of this sickness that I'm now holy. No. I wanted to wear the hijab and just wear hijab or like wear hair tie, like stop wearing wags and just be more close to God all this while. But I couldn't do it because I sell extensions and also I was just used to wearing them all these years and just used to neglecting God subhanallah all these years. So... But I do tell you guys this the whole time that this year was going to be a new year for me. And one of them was I'm going to be more close to God. And I do tell you guys that way before the sickness, thank God. Some of you that watched that video, let me know, comment below if you hear me saying that in some of my videos. So this sickness just kicked in, just came and helped me, push me up, you know. So it was, I was just like, yeah, Amy, find a better and behave now. Because this sickness hit me before... This sickness, this sickness hit me when I just start wearing the hijab. When I, I start wearing the hijab and be, I'm just wearing hair tie and just... So you will see me with hijab or a hair tie. But you will not be seeing me with my hair out again, you know, and stuff. And just neglecting Allah again, you know. So I'm trying now to stop neglecting Allah, subhanAllah, all these years. You know, like a lot of us do, let's just be real. So before I even had the symptoms... I just saw people, you know, that have it, ah, <sighs> can't breathe. And the stuff that, you know, that they're going through and people that in Africa, how they're afraid of us, you know, and running away from us because of this condition. And I remember how they love us. And always when we are going, they're like, bring me phone, bring me this, bring me this. And now from nowhere, they don't want us. They don't want us to go. I was like, whoa. This so actually people are alone with Allah. And when we die, this is how it's going to be. We are going to be alone. Look at the seafood, how they don't want us anymore. I start thinking about Allah more and be more afraid for my death and just for, for tomorrow. 
so and then i start thinking that's it it's my time and i was because i was praying more i was having the color thing we call it color color is when you have a cloth and you just so and then I just continue and then I, I said that's it, I'm gonna stop wearing the extensions and just either do hijab or head tie. But I'll not be leaving my hair alone again and just trying to be more close to Allah and stuff. And also my daughter decided to wear it because her friends started wearing it. So I was like, thank God, thank Allah, thank Allah. I don't have to try to convince my daughter to do it and she's gonna say that you forced me to it. I was like, thank Allah, this is my time. So that's it. So I start wearing it a couple of days later. The sickness strike me. Hey! Nearly die. Still did not fully recover yet. Still weak as hell. Don't see me talking like this. It's just because it's Amijob. I talk a lot. Mashallah. But <laughs> I'm still so weak and still cannot just breathe properly. Cannot do anything, but I managed to wash all the dishes and clean the kitchen, you know, everything, you know, this afternoon. But I'm still weak as hell and just, and I'm scared to go out. So I, I'm, I'm still scared to go outside, you know, even though I want to go out so much. I'm bored of the house and it's nice and warm outside, but so yeah, I'm just gonna wrap this here. I already rambled enough. So thank you for watching the video. Hopefully this cheered you up and give you confidence that even if you have some symptom that you think is the flu, do not be afraid. You're going to be fine. God is good. And your own heart, your own good, good stuff that you did in this world will also guide you. And your God, especially if it's Allah, I hope it is, will guide you <laughs> so <laughs> you guys have a good day thank you for watching i'm gonna wrap the video here and i'm gonna see you guys again next time okay bye thank you for watching <laughs>